takes you a little while to find the local mage's guild. You're a nervous out of your mind as you walk down the steps into the building. It's been a decade since you even saw a wizard, and you're not really sure what to expect. In Hammerfell, there were some pretty weird stereotypes about wizards, but you're sure they can't all be true. You are greeted enthusiastically. Zarasha, this is certainly a surprise. What are you doing all the way down here in... Oh dear, you're some other random female Khajiit, aren't you? Well, this is certainly awkward. What is it you need? Racism. Even wizards do it. Imitate their weird poses to show you have come in peace. Nanu Nanu Grimbach. Um, he must be talking about... He? Oh, I thought that was a girl at first, this one. He must be talking about that girl Quill we've had mentioned. See if we can get some information about her. Zarasha? You heard there was someone in town who looked kind of like you. Does she come by here? Oh, no, the wizard explains. Zarasha is just one of the Khajiit friends from up at the university. You look a lot like her. Not because all Khajiit look the same or anything. No, no, this would... This would be incredibly racist, but no. It's... Uh, that's okay, you say. It's probably just the lighting, anyway. I'm Kadia. I recently acquired some unusual magic problems. Whenever I get offended by a cat joke, even one I thought up myself... Stuff catches on fire. Okay, it's not when she's upset. It's just whenever there's a cat joke specifically. And then people started saying cat jokes. I know you might be apprehensive about these wizards, Katia, but you might as well let the cat out of the bag. But don't. To be honest, I don't give a cat about stupid puns. Be a good kitty and don't claw the tapestries. That could cause big problems for you. Problems. Aw, it didn't do the problems for you. It did problems for you. Tell the truth. Whenever the voices in your head make cat-based insults, something catches fire. <laughs> sure, you'll sound crazy, but at least they'll probably believe you're a wizard. If you don't have any good results now, just go and take another cat nap. Come back later in two to three hours. Kind of like that. Yeah. I mean, at least you're by mages, so they, yeah, they can probably just do that. Why are they holding their hands up like that? Why are they holding their hands up like that? Kind of like that. You dig uncomfortably into your past and tell the wizard everything. You explain that you've been never been able to use magic, despite trying your hardest to learn how when you were younger. When you started to get really frustrated, your parents even had you tested by some wizards. They said you'd never be able to use magic, but they didn't know why. One of them suggested it might be a treatable disease called Astral Vapors. That's an interesting disease name, but even the most expensive medicines didn't help you. You've kind of tried to forget about that time in your life. Sometimes fires would start around you, but you figured it was caused by someone else or something else. But then yesterday, it kind of started getting worse. The fires got bigger. And yesterday, you almost got killed because of it. You guess the fires got worse after you touched the sparkly blue thing you found in some runes. It was kind of dumb. An impulsive move on your part. And you promise you won't touch any mysterious, magical things again. The wizard strokes his lack of beard thoughtfully. He says it is quite a puzzling predicament, but he has a theory. He needs to know when you were born. You give him your full birth date. Eighth of the sun's disc, 413. Of course 413. Why wouldn't it be 413? Okay. Um, he tells you to wait here. He has to check the library for a book. Wait. Eighth of the sun's disc. I don't know exactly how Skyrim dates work. So that's like the 8th of month and then the year. So I believe this is in the towards the end of the 4th era or 3rd era. End of the 3rd era, the 413th year of the 3rd era. He tells you to wait here. He has to check the library for books. He also wants to see if his amulet collection is still there. 
If he's right, he thinks you'll like what he has to say. Just give him a few minutes. <clears throat> I just like how they all have their hands up perpetually now. <laughs> With the wizard out of the room, you let your arms down and rest for a bit. You choke out a nervous laugh and tell the elf woman that just yesterday you were still genuinely convinced that people need a long beard to use magic. She tells you that's very silly. Wizards work with open flames all the time. For a magic user to even consider having facial hair, you'd have to be mad. Frankly, she wouldn't even use magic if she had fur. Not to be racist or anything, you tell her it's okay, you understand. Ask her for a job. A simple one, maybe just gathering alchemy ingredients from outside town. Oh, that doesn't look promising. You confess that you're also a bit short on cash and looking for a way to get some spare spending money or eating money or housing money or clothing money. You'd best be very you'd be very interested if the guild needs anyone to run errands or collect plants in the field outside town. She says she can't think of anything they need right now. They've mostly been doing research and the occasional healing job that the chapel can't handle. The roads are relatively safe as of late, making ingredient collection a rather enjoyable and scenic activity. The coast in particular is beautiful this time of year. Occasionally other people do stop by the guild hall looking to get some unusual ingredients, of course. Necromancer? Question mark? Oh, just walking by. Nothing to see there. Ah, how opportune. There's Matt. He's a chef who specializes in traditional Ar Argonian cuisine. Uh, uh, which, is un which she understands is spiced with poisons that would be lethal to most species. He stops by every once in a while to buy more ingredients. Hi, Matt. Don't forget to wipe the marinara sauce off that kitchen knife. Yeah... Just wants to buy some poison. Probably the necromancer. What a nice boy. Hannibal says we have triple our prices for some reason when selling to Matt, so maybe he'd be willing to buy ingredients from you if you're interested. You tell her that's okay. You think you'll find someone else to work for. She says that's fine. It's your choice. Anything else you can help with while you're while you wait? Disregard obvious assassin? No, I think it's a necromancer. That's probably like a ritual dagger. And I don't know why he'd need poisons in particular, but yeah. Lots more debate. Don't follow Matt. Don't follow Matt. Don't follow Matt. Wait for the other guy to get back. Don't follow Matt. Don't foul Matt. Okay. I think I've thought it over. Curiosity kills the cat, you know, so don't follow Matt. Yeah, he's definitely not a blatant assassin. Just keep chatting with the nice wizard and don't follow Matt. Don't follow him. Whatever you do, don't follow Matt. Pay no mind to the chef slash murderer that just walked by. Just try to pretend Matt doesn't exist. Don't follow Matt. Who is this mad of which you speak? There is nobody in here but you, the elf, and the wizard. <laughs> I don't know why that was so funny to me. <laughs> Kadia, ask about local jobs or for what natural foliage and other plant materials would be worth most to collect. You continue to chat with the elf lady while you wait for the wizard to return. You lie and say that you already have some folks lined up who are willing to purchase ingredients from you. However, you have some trouble recognizing which plants are worth the most. You're wondering if she has any good resources on alchemy you could borrow. She replies that she knows a bit about alchemy herself. For your standard 50 gold an hour training fee, she'd be willing to give you some basic lessons in identifying useful ingredients. You tell her that you can't spare that kind of money right now, but she refuses to budge on the prices. She just can't spare the time without compensation. She has too many important experiments going on right now. Like this thing. It goes back and forth. But for how long? Wizard's back. 
Before you have much time to admire the swingy ball thing, the wizard returns and asks you to come with him. You found exactly what he was looking for. You want to easily follow him into the next room, unsure of what to expect. First things first, he wants to lend you an old trinket of his. Put this on. Green usually means stanima. It's an amulet of silence, he explains. Okay. As in, an actual enchanted amulet. Not the slang term for that. Not that I'm saying you'd be familiar with that, just because you're a Khajiit. That'd be kind of racist. Um, should solve your fire problem. You can still speak while wearing the amulet, but you won't be able to use magic until you take it off. Needless to say, it's been involved in quite a few jokes. Most of which accidentally ended in someone getting killed. In fact, for get lending, maybe it's best if you just keep it. It'd be good to get some new fingerprints on it. That doesn't seem like a nice way of treating it. She wanted to learn how to control it, not just have it taken away from her. You thank the wizard for his gift, but confess that you were hoping to learn why this was happening to you, not just, like, suppress it. Yeah, see? That's why you needed your birth date, he explains. See? Sometimes when magic talents first manifest in a person, there's some spell discharge before they learn to control it. Usually if this was going to happen, it would have happened when you were a child, which makes your case kind of unusual, but then he figured it out. You're an Atronach. You ask him what that means, because you have no clue. You're born under the constellation of an Atronach or a Golem. The stars often have some impact on people's lives, but none so great as being born under the Atronach. You handle Magicka differently than most people. While well, their bodies produce Magicka, yours absorbs it. In the past, when you were unable to use magic, it was probably simply because your reservoir was depleted. When you touched that blue sparkly thing, which he suspects was an ancient Aliad Magicka well, it fully charged you up for what was probably the first time in your entire life. Judging from your display in the lobby, you're perfectly healthy in terms of magical ability. Many people would say that because of your birth sign, you're destined to become a powerful mage. No. Okay, I'm remembering what the Atronach is. So, like, there are two types of players that would use the Atronach. Either a war mage that's concentrating more on the fighting side and less on the magic side, because then they can just actually tank the hits and use that the hits from more magical stuff to power their spells whenever they need them. Or, um, yeah, I guess a powerful caster, because it... Eh, no, it wouldn't want to be a powerful caster. It also reduces the amount of magicka damage you take by a percent, which is probably how she got struck square on the chest by the lightning from the imp and was mostly unfazed. Um, the other type that uses it is just a full-on, like, barbarian build that just wants to have the extra magical resistance. It could be really good for a mage in some cases, like, specific cases, because it doubles your maximum magicka compared to other people, but it just basically means that you have sort of D&D-esque spell slots instead of having to... Instead of slowly regaining magic over time, it basically makes it so that you need to be careful with how you use your magicka. This is a lot for you to take in. You are more than a little distraught that your life might have gone down an entirely different path if you had learned about your birth signs earlier. Like, if you hadn't avoided reading about astrology due to being irrationally afraid of Lord Constellation, of the Lord Constellation, mind you. You're just not sure what to do about this now. Part of you feels like it's too late in your life to simply start learning magic, especially when you can't afford any kind of training, but at least you know there's nothing really wrong with you like you thought. The wizard says that what you do now is up to you. Not to be... Why is it always not to be racist? But he admits that magicka can be difficult for Khajiit, especially getting a late start like you are. It's not impossible, though. In fact, that close Khajiit friend he mentioned, Zarasha, was just a bit younger than you when she started. She has rapidly progressed to one of the most respected positions in the university. 
He thinks you'd get along with her really well if you ever ended up enrolling. The two of you would probably have become best friends upon your first formal meeting. Uh, I wouldn't say best friends if she was there for the show. Um... I really don't like the Atronach sign if I'm trying to be a mage. Because it just, as you said, you need to have another person casting magic on you in order to recharge it. Or you need to have potions like that. So it means that you either are dependent on potions or are dependent on fighting another magic caster and getting hit. Which just seems like it's all ultimately setting you up for failure since all of a sudden what was a replenishable resource suddenly you either have to pay to replenish or you need to actively be getting harmed by another person's magicka in order to use it. You see that sounds very nice. You always wanted a Khajiit friend. No racism intended. Human friends are fine too. You're not sure that the university is really an option for you, though. I mean, you'll, you've will you never really identified as a mage or a scholar, and you don't think you could really do anything like that. He tells you that your problem is a lack of confidence. That's what I've been saying this whole time. And if being ahead of the Arcane University has taught him anything, it's that there is only one cure for lack of confidence. Why are you vi vibrating? Robes. Seriously. Up at the university, we give them out for just about anything, like, Hey, you found a soul gem? Take this fancy new robe. The kids love it. I love it. Everyone loves robes. You just gotta get the robe cannon out whenever you're at one of the magic ball games and just go... <laughs> robes for everyone. I remember when I was a young lad in High Rock, I'd always wear my mother's dress. <laughs> I was pretending I was a wizard. Also a ballerina. My parents were worried, but it's awesome. In fact, you know what? We're gonna go and back and find you a mage robe. Something that can give you confidence. Come on. So, like, the issue with robes in Skyrim, at least, I haven't actually worn robes in Oblivion, so I don't know. But what they do is increase your magicka regeneration rate so that you can cast spells more frequently and easier. But... If Cadia doesn't have Magicka regeneration to begin with, how does increasing a regeneration rate for it help anything? <laughs> hey, I got this in on time. Aw, it's like a bunch of art for what Cadia should look like. And with the hood edition, the shape and hue of the blue is... I really like both of Abe's designs. I like the blue, but it seems, um... No, I like it. Especially with the green one with the hood edition. The shape and the hue of the blue one is nice, and I really like the brown mantle too. Here's one that takes a bit from each. Plus a nice hat. <laughs> Just get, like, the most awkward hat possible. Yeah, this looks nice. I'd go with either this or that. And they went with this. Middle ground, kind of. Aww. It looks wizardy. Still feels strange to you, and you've never really thought of yourself as a mage. You guess you never really thought of yourself as much of anything. Your own reflection feels foreign right now. Like a stranger on the street. She looks like someone better than you, in a way. It's like you're meeting that mythical Katya Monaghan for the first time. A person you've been striving to become. Seeing her behind that glass is strangely inspiring and a bit scary. You're almost afraid you'll be a disappointment to her. This is silly. It's just a fashionable new robe. You'll try not to like it too much, since loving things tends to guarantee they'll be destroyed. You meet the wizard back in the lobby of the guild hall. He says the new robes look very nice on you. The colors go well with your fur. You say thanks, and thank him for giving it to you. You're just not sure what you're gonna do with it from here. The whole magicka thing is very sudden and a little scary, and you still don't really have any friends you can turn to if things get out of hand. He assures you that if Khajiit mages were anything like real ones, you'd be able to figure things out on your own pretty well. 
boy, the one time they say not to be racist. Um, when you have enough money to afford professional training, every city has a mages guild that will happily all offer their services. Each one tends to specialize in different branches of the magical arts. Oh, what branch was Cyrodiil? Forgot. For instance, down here they specialize in healing and other restorative spells, making it one of the few places that is safe for a Karahil, Karahil to conduct her very important research on the effects of <laughs> sorting bone meal. Over in Skyrimgrad they focus on destruction magic. Up in Choral they teach conjuration, and that's pretty much all the nearby guild halls you need to worry about. He has to work to get back. To, he has work to get back to. But if you have any other important questions before you leave, he'd be happy to give you a quick answer. Hmm. I did all. So the first time I saw Bone Meal in Oblivion, that was something I thought of. Has that always been there? Wait. I want to see if that's always been there on the table like that. No, it hasn't. Okay. As for the whereabouts of the Khajiit Mage, it's probably worth asking where you can safely practice Magicka without starting a house fire. Also might not be bad to get an idea about how Magicka absorbing works, like how can you restore it for free? If he knows anything about the mage-oriented going-ons in Kavach. Actually speaking of, does he know what the Kavach Mage Guild specializes in? I've always wondered. Eh, you actually have a lot of questions you say, but I'll try to make them fast. You ask him if his friend Zarasha lives around here. You'd love to make new friends, but also admit that you've also done things you're not too proud of and wouldn't want to reflect poorly on other, other, any other Khajiit in town. The wizard says not to worry about that. She lives at the Arcane University far to the northeast of here, just outside of the Imperial City. You'll meet her if you ever make it to the University, though. You also consult him you also consult with him for a bit regarding how to safely practice magic. He says that safety isn't too big of a concern for someone of your beginner ability. He suggests simply finding an open area where you can try to get some control over the fires. One usually has to understand the basics before they can move on to more <laughs> Restoring your magicka will no doubt be your greatest hurdle. Plenty of alchemists sell potions that will restore some, but that can become very expensive. See, that's what I was talking about. Like, it's not very easy for her to restore it, which is part of what makes her being a mage hard. Um, sometimes you'll be able to absorb spells cast on you. You may want to have a non-Atronach friend hit you with a few healing spells in the hopes that you'll take in a few of them. Elliot wells like the one you found yesterday are your best bet for when your friends are unavailable, he explains. Gracefully sidestepping or if you're f or if you have no friends, yeah. Speaking of that, the a speaking of Aelia Dwells, you tell him that you found it while you're on your way to Gvatch. You understand that there's a mages guild in every city, but when naming the nearby guild halls he didn't mention We don't talk about the Gvatch Mages Guild. Do you hear me? We don't talk about that. Anyways, it's probably about time you leave, he tells you. There's plenty of work to be done around here that he's sure you have things to get back to as well. It's been a pleasure speaking with you, and he hopes that it leaves a positive impact on your life. And you get out. You follow the wizard's straightforward command. Well, overall that was... Awesome. Oh, that's nice. She's smiling. She's smiling. She's smiling. Okay, wizards are about the coolest thing ever, and now you can make things happen with your mind. At least, sort of. It'll probably be totally be super expensive for you, though, with the whole Atronach thing. For the time being, you should probably just focus on employment, but still, you're a wizard. You're a wizard, Kadia. This is kind of exciting. Hey, shouldn't we be getting back to Quilly? I don't want to mess up your relationship with her any more than it already is. You've got about another half an hour to kill. 
You don't want to rush her or anything. You understand she's making some hard decisions about whether or not it's even worth being your kind of friend. You should probably find one more place to check out before heading back. How do you know what time it is? You're looking at your wrist like you have a watch. So that's where I'm going to leave this episode. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode, where we see if Cadia figures any of these wizard things out. Anyways, see ya!